Shut up! <laughs> All right. Um, this is the last presentation of the evening. So before we start, uh, one thing I wanted to ask: someone lost a vaporizer, one of those e-cigarettes. If anyone found one, come bring it to me. <laughs> and I will make sure it gets to the right place. Um, other than that, uh, so this is the last presentation by CCP Quant. After that, at seven, everyone has to be out of the building, including your stuff, like jackets and stuff. Go somewhere, have dinner, and then this opens back up at nine for the party. Yeah. All right. So, without further ado, then uh, CCP Quant. is uh, an internal database that we keep where we store everything like we were building time series of important data so we'll be doing it that way that I'm just gonna ask you what you want to see and we'll just do a live uh, graph session from it so it's, it's pretty open-ended the presentation itself is gonna take maybe 30 40 minutes and then we have yeah we can make whatever we want to basically This works. This this is not PowerPoint. This is some some HTML format, which is generated in R. How many know R or used R? Yeah. Actually, more than expected. It's like ten people. <laughs> <laughs> so it all begins with data. Uh, TQ the Q, TQ database is currently at 2.8 terabytes of data. It's just keeping the state of everything in Eve. Just like all the data that the, the cluster needs to, to operate. And it's kept at that to, so we have to make sure it's, it's optimal. We, we basically archive all historical data into an archive database. And that one is currently sitting at 4.5 terabytes. And then we have logs, and this is actually a a year old graph, but it's, it still remains the same. We generate about 300 million lines of, of logs uh, every day. And so that's about 50 gigabytes of uncompressed data that just gets generated every day, text files. Uh, there's, this is the difference between the data, the amount of data that gets generated during weekends and weekdays versus weekdays. So it's quite a lot actually. It's, Let's see, I can make this zoom. So it's, yeah, 21.7% more during weekends than, than weekdays. And this is 
when going through the time series that we will be looking at, I will show you this later in the presentation, uh, there's always this, this pattern of spikes during weekends and then low during, during the weekdays. So that's how, I, I guess that's probably the same thing for, for most games. We've accumulated 50 terabytes now of, uh, of text files, this, uh, these logs. And this is where Hadoop comes in. We use that to, to process these logs. Uh, through Mac. Has anyone used Hadoop or MapReduce in any form? Okay, more than use R. Uh, then we have also Hive, it's, uh, it, it allows us to query the logs like it was just any, any table in SQL. How many people know SQL? Plenty. Most people. Alright, and then it's the new metrics mm -hmm. database that I, I talked about. So, just one case here going into PVP damage. In EVE, all PvP damage, basically all damage in EVE, but here, for this case, I'm taking PvP damage, it's applied, it's aggregated and logged every five seconds into the database. So we, like, for, for you, for example, when you're shooting someone, <coughs> then every five seconds there's a tick saying, this guy here in that ship fired at that guy in that ship using the following modules and how many shots were made with each module and how much damage was applied. And in this example, I'm taking the entirety of, of October 2016. And this is like seven and a half billion records that, we, that I had to shift through. And this took eight and a half minutes on, on this Hatu cluster that we have. So this would, this would take ages to do uh, if we had to do this on, on one machine. And this is how this is how we define events basically. So every event here's a, here's a it's a JSON format of, of how the event is, is structured. For example, in this case, we're looking at damaged player. This event here, uh, where we have the character ID of the person shooting in which solar system using what ship, and actually the individual ship. We have to know what ship did it, uh, the type of the ship, and. Uh, the attacker ID, which actually is the same as character ID, so it's redundant. Uh, the attacker ship ID, the type of the of the attacker ship, uh, the state you the the victim was in basically before receiving that damage, like how much HP does he have, how much cap, how much yeah, shield armor, <coughs> things like that. And then we have this list in the end where we where we list uh, what module type did the damage using what charts, how many shots, and the total damage applied. So how MapReduce works, uh, it's, so we, we, can, we have to store this in, in a distributed form, all that data, and then we can basically feed it into that cluster, distribute it down into many machines, into many cores per machine, where we process the lines and, and basically shuffle it then and move it to a reducer to get a final aggregated result. And just if, if any of you guys are using Linux, then this is a really simple form if you do it locally on your computer. You just, you just uh, pipe the contents of a large file into, into your mapper and pipe it forward into the reducer and down into the output file. Now, here's the code just that I used for, for this instance. Uh, we're just reading line by line from, from the, the text files we get. And this is, so this function is running on multiple cores, on multiple machines, basically. And it gets, like we distribute all these log lines down to, into this cluster. So it, it gets just, a, a, each one gets a subset of, of all the lines. Uh, we have to split it, it's tab separated in this case, it's not the JSON ones. Uh, and then we have our own event parser basically that reads the line and just makes sure in this case we just take the, uh, the damaged player event. 
and just quit, well, take the next line if it's not that type. And then this is the list that I was talking about. I have to basically for what I do here is say for each solar system and each type of the attacking ship, sorry, of the victim ship and the type of the attacker ship uh, and the module type and charge type and actually done shots, I'm, I'm summing up the total damage. And then I have to output the results into the reducer, which basically does the same, but now you have, you know, like you, the reducer now has, has all these types basically as keys and it's summarizing the output of all the mappers. So the, I'm definitely boring everyone who hasn't, doesn't know uh, map reducer coding here, no worries. It's just like just to show you basically the code behind this. So running this on the cluster, and then I have to, I load the results into R, and what I do in R, I basically load that PSV file, which is just it's a tab separated uh, file containing the solar system ID, ship type ID, and so forth, deciding on that the number of shots and damage need to be double. Got some integer overflow. Uh, and then I have to aggregate it a little bit more. So now, by these keys you see over here, I'm summing up the number of shots and the total damage. So now we have our data set. And it looks like this. And we have 1.8 million rows to work with. One more thing, just. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit large. One more thing, uh, just to make it easier to work with and for us later also. I just I've resolved a lot of these IDs uh, into names. Obviously we're not locking the, the name of the ships, all these strings, because we, we have all these just IDs that we can look up in the database. What is this ship type ID? What uh, what, what's the name of the ship, what group is it in, and what category is it in, and so forth. Uh, same with the solar system, we want to get the solar system name of it, and, and the region name, and so forth. Uh, on top of that, I made, and for the rest of the, the graphs here in this section, I just made sure that the, the, the thing that's being shot at is a ship. So, because structure damage makes the data really like, and not as fun, because it, it's just, like, there's a lot of grind, of course, that, that happens. Uh, so here we're just focusing on, focusing on PvP combat between ships. Actually, where the, where the victim is ship, there's still some structure damage coming, yeah, structure coming from, damage coming from structures. So the, the resulting table looks like this, so you have all these, this character, columns just for making it easier and a final value of, of 936,000 records. Uh, one more basically variable to make is the damage per shot basically. So how of every shot you're, you're doing with the mod, uh, with all that, that deep nesting of, of items you're using to make that shot. Uh, Want to see how much damage is actually done each one. And here, if I plot the damage per slot, per shot on the x-axis, okay. and the power grid required to fit the module that's doing, that's firing it, it looks like this. Is it, like, does anyone have, like, the, how would you, make this graph into a little bit more readable and understandable graph for anyone? Sorry? Correct. Correct. Alright. So that's here. If we, if we put logarithmic on both sides, we can see how you have small modules, small turrets and stuff, medium, large and extra large. And you can see the power grid required 
it's an exponential scale basically where you have yeah it just requires exponential amount of of grid to fit and it's doing also uh, somewhat of an exponential uh, exponential more damage with a lot of overlap as well and to basically we don't have in our database in the items table we don't have anything indicating a class of, of a module like it's a small medium large or extra large so I just pick the power grid required to, to fit the fitting requirement and then just you can do a simple k means to get these clusters here so I have to make that variable a part of the data set as well so this is something that yeah when you when you don't really have all the information available often you have to just improvise now we can begin to look at some data we can see that for small modules, the top one used is 200 millimeter outer pen F2. It's, it's not really top one used, but it's, it's the most damage in October from a small module was coming from 200 millimeter outer pen. And then 280 uh, howitzer or 2 uh, light neutron blaster. Is, does anyone have a hard time reading this? All right. So then I do this. Whoa. I was afraid this was going to happen. It happened in Vegas. I just derailed it a bit. But I had a presentation in Vegas, and the screen was actually smaller than that, and the audience was just far back, basically. So no, and I had dark graphs as well, and it was really bright in there. No one could read anything. I had to read over every single graph and try and explain what people were looking at. So it's just flat pages. Try to make some jokes in some graphs and people didn't get it. So that's why I'm, I'm here coming prepared now. So that's the top list here for the medium ones. You have the rapid light missile launcher, two, 250 rail guns, heavy assault launcher, 720 howitzers. So forth, large, 800 millimeters. It's a lot of that, and, and pulses, large pulses. Neutron blaster cannons. Where's the first rail? It's a real gun. It's not even there, is it? Closing! <laughs> I, yeah, maybe I should give Fossil just a mic, it's going to be a lot of this, maybe. Uh, <laughs> uh, interesting to see the Citadel launcher first here as a total. Total damage applied using extra large modules in, in October is coming from from this one here, uh, and then these ones here. All right, moving on. I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, so here it, it's just a random thought here. Uh, looking at the, the classes, missile launcher, projectiles, hybrid, and, and energy weapons, and looking at how much damage they are doing in each region, basically. It's pretty uniform in, in the void. Geminate, it's yeah, missile launchers mainly, and it's still pretty uniform. Uh, it's here in Syndicate, you can see missile launchers are pre preferred, and then hybrids and projectiles. Energy weapons, no. Can uh, let's go over the glaring <coughs> ones. Singlison, it's yeah, it's a hybrid weapon. Hybrid <coughs> there. Missile launchers. Is there anything? Yeah, fate. Missile launchers. The Citadel hybrid. Sorry. Black rice hybrids. 
Yeah, so this was only, I had to do only a top region, so then... <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. okay, so top engine crystals by class. So what crystals are, are doing the most damage? Okay, we're gonna have to do this again. Aren't Small Imperial Navy, Multi Free, Aurora, Aurora, Scorch, Hump, Gleam, yeah, Attack 2 here, and here, and here. Uh, For the medium, really similar. But it's, it's pretty, you can also see that it's, it's really mostly six ones doing most of the damage. Large, similar here. Sansa multi free in, in Excel. And here is the damage per shot. And this is, I was almost inclined to skip this one because this depends for small sample sizes, like ammo that's not used a lot, for example. You'll see this later for, for the missiles or something. Uh, it, if, if, if there are really few really good shots, it's going gonna, it's gonna to offset the, the, the ammo type, basically. Um, most damage per shot in, in small ones, through Sansa Axe Race. Let's see. Uh, for the medium ones, it's Gleam. Large Aurora and Conflagration in, in Excel. Right? Hybrids, is he white? <laughs> and this is, yeah, this is pretty one sided. You just see white and antimatter basically here. Uh, let me zoom into that. Yeah, white, antimatter, for medium, antimatter, white, spike, void, antimatter, <laughs> no, coming in large as well. Uh, yeah, it's basically the same thing. So a lot of not too much usage from the other ones, but like that's also the damp no sorry, that's the this the this the let's see. Yeah, that's the total damage. Here, this one here. Damage per shot. Yeah, void let. What is this? Yeah, guardian let. Uh, uranium, 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 so forth. Projectiles, we can skip over this. Um, <laughs> this <laughs> uh, EMP, quite a lot on all of them, basically. And then you have hail in the extra large ones. Uh, fusion coming in second, phase plasma here in, in medium. Zoom in a little bit, but it's it's also you can just see how the ammo types are free are really being favored, uh, and the total damage per. I mean, it's not that. Yeah. Domination EMP. So here's another thing. There's the like even though they the damage difference between these types isn't that this much, then it, it can be. If you have just few people using it and making good shots compared to the other ones, it can can make it heavily biased. Uh, missile launchers. Uh, bombs are actually tagged as, as missile launchers or launchers. So we have the electric electron bomb here, number one, in small. Bomb launcher is also small. Um, let's see. Mjolnir, shrapnel and squirts, bombs here. Um, for the medium ones, you have squirts and Mjolnir, mainly raids here, number four. So 
Word and the Citadel ones here in, in Excel, unsurprisingly. And here's the per shot one. You can see just how the bombs absolutely dominate. So of course, they're doing AOE damage. Um, Here, I just because missile launchers are, they have so many categories compared to all the other, other ones. So, obviously, I'm going to need to zoom into this one too. So that's just how the, the profiles of, of what's doing the most damage by all these these types. I'm not going to read through it. I'm just going to slowly scroll. There's the cruise launchers, heavy launchers. Assault launchers, rapid torpedo launchers. I have no idea why this did get sorted like this way. It's the only one that didn't follow my, what I was asking it to do. Uh, <laughs> missile launchers, rapid light here. <laughs> okay, there's two here. <laughs> Three. <laughs> He's throwing you. And yeah. Rockets. Alright. So that's the level of detail we can we can get in. I actually did one more of these. This is just the, the star map. Uh, the sizes of the dots are the total amount of damage that was done in each of these solar systems. Uh, the color is the type of ammunition, like if it's a projectile or if it's a, if it's a hybrid missile. So you can see the, the what, what do you call this? It's not really purple, it's like bluish. Oh, it's purple here. On my screen, it's, it's a little bit more blue. It's, it's projectile ammo. So you can see it's, it's mostly. The projectile ammo is, is used is doing the most damage in all of these regions. Uh, the one here, for example, that's uh, that's blasters. The red dish, pink, brownish color. Um, Cobalt Edge, advanced torpedo. But as you can just see how projectiles are just for the entirety of the star map. It's just dominating. Um, so. Sorry? Yeah. I was thinking about the damage with mole ammunition from the fighter. Exactly. So there's a separate lock. So you're not you it's not you that's shooting, it's the so it's a, it's a there's a separate lock for, for fighter damage and, and yeah, drone damage in, in general. Could you make the same graph for carrier at <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> and that's why during the live master session, I will have Posse here also whitelist requests because we, as I said, we like all the data is there, and there's one request someone asked for. Uh, all this, like, on, for all these solar systems, get the, uh, the total mining that's being done, and then cross-reference with, with it with how many uh, mining barges are being killed, and try and find the, the ones where a lot of mining is being done and no killing. So, <laughs> 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 One interesting request from uh, from the web, uh, from what Facebook recall correctly was the NPC bounties. And if you're following the economic reports, people have been looking at this picture here. This is the, the yellow line are bounty prices that's being paid out every single day. And it's a it, it was about one trillion a day bounty prices. And since the war ended, basically. <laughs> it's gone up dramatically. All the other faucets are
are pretty pretty stable and sinks as well. Um, What's the green one? The gray one? The gray That's one. transaction tax. The green, well, the green is broker fees. So with the introduction of, of Citadel, this and then we, we made the change to increase the, the broker fees, as you remember, and then that's actually a major sink now, where it used to be like not so big. Uh, maybe I should I can let's see. Here we go. Yeah, so it's bounty prices, incursions, then it's insurance here, agent mission rewards, manufacturing. Uh, the loyal point store that people are just are paying to get items out, transaction tax is the next one, and the broker fees. And this is something you can see every month. How many people have never read over the monthly economic report? We have some work to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of interesting stuff there. So, if we look at Zoom on in on NPC bounties for this year alone. We can see that there is actually a general increase in, in it. <laughs> yes. because you get all the spikes during all the weekends always and then to try and understand because this graph over here it's it's really I mean you can you can really see how dull this is big you but because it's stacked you have no idea how much it's increasing for the rest of them so forth so it's really nice to actually if you do this moving average then you just use the the beginning of the period as a baseline and just take the how it's changing over time backlines yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then you can look at the percentages, so in, if you're looking at Delft going up by 900%. <laughs> Cloud Ring is, is pretty unstable, and it just spikes up to an eye of and, and down again. But we're looking at percentages, so it's it's not... I mean, it's it, it could be just a few billion. Uh, yeah, so that's that's it for this. 